Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of Heavy Metal Tones with me, your podcast host, Tony Evans. Um, I just want to stop out and apologise originally out from the outset for last week's. I, good episode, loved it, um, but I was not well and um, rambled a bit, and I usually ramble anyway, uh, and all the clicking and clacking on the computer. I've actually fixed that now, would you believe it? I've had this laptop for 11 years and I didn't know how to change the sleep mode settings. And I, after that episode, I was like, oh, Damn it, it keeps annoying me. So I fixed it up. Um, anyway, I don't think it was that bad. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm being self-effacing on I it was a good episode. Uh, today I also have my little Ketty, who's originally on my lap, so no knocking of things. Whether well, she might get a shit and knock the computer as she runs away. You never know, right? Anyway, um, this week's one is a, a fun one. I've, I've not done I've not done one like this for a little while. I've been a lot of um album reviews and things like that, which is great, but it takes it, it sort of becomes analytical and not as much uh, fun scratching the beard as what ASMR people out there. Um, and I thought, well, what am I going to do? And I was inspired. I really couldn't think of um, a thing to do this week. I was going to do, and I'm still going to do it, I'm doing um, a breakdown of my favourite uh, 70s hard rock bands. I wasn't going to do... A Who episode, and I think I'm going to do a Slade one. Uh, right, uh, but the uh, um, but I was sort of inspired by um, Phil um, uh, Burgess, and he was chatting about my like he sort of liked my picture, my battle jacket on my Facebook page from a gig that I went to the other day, and I thought, oh yeah, you know what? Um, I love my jacket, and I really loved. It. Um, the sort of histrionics around it and uh, originally I did have Benji I asked Benji to get me some top tips now he may he hasn't gotten to me yet because I did ask him last minute um, what I'll do is uh, I'll do a little sub if I get around to it if I can and if they come in in time I'll do a little follow on ep a little five minute one um, for, for Benji to, to for his information I'll do mine at the moment the reason I say ask Benji because Benji's got this um amazing knack uh, of uh, of jacket making he's just so gifted with it um, really really sort of found his niche I think in that department um, so where to begin we we'll begin at the beginning Tony we we'll begin at the beginning and what we what we're going to say here is that the history of the battle jacket so it basically get my book my notes uh, <clears throat> consult the book of armaments that's a that's a Monty Python quote there for you, uh, particularly Matt. Um, so 60s, 70s, and 80s. Well, they basically were started around in the 60s. Um, my my earliest memory. So for, so the history is before we do that. Um, they were originally sort of um, worn these sort of the jackets, like the denim jackets and so on, worn by the American Air, Air Corps, and they would collect the insignia and uh, um, and and sew them to their jackets it then followed in through to the, the sort of bikey um, subcultures of America then in through to the bikies in the UK and Australia and around the world um, and then from there it sort of took off um, into the real first sort of major uh, sort of cut off sleeved ones ones we know about that we wear now like I have the blue uh, it was always um, with thrash bands it was it was bleached denim with the early bikies in the UK, it was what they would bleach it to. It went white denim, um, and it was really new album, the new wave of British heavy metal, my favourite form of music. I feel heavy metal. Um, that is where it sort of took off. Now, um, my earliest memory is my brother Andrew, a big um, status quo fan at that time. I don't know if he still is. Up. I couldn't tell you, um, but he was a big, big fan of status quo. And being born in '59, um, I don't rem. I he's a lot older than me, um, and um, he's he's 14 years older than me. And I remember seeing him going out <clears throat> with um, his tight leather, tight denim jeans, flared. Uh, and a, and a, and a stone washed denim blue denim jacket and he'd written on the back 
I know it's not a patch, but it's a sort of, it's, it goes there. He'd written on the pack, Quo, on the back, Quo, and he'd sort of done, and, and he had a couple of patches that he'd sewn on. I remember he had like a, a Quo patch on the arm. He had a peace symbol on one arm and very, you know, bought child of the 60s kind of crap, really. But I do remember him wearing that um, and going off and, and getting into some trouble with gigs. Um, later, I mean, he was also, he also had a lot of Slade stuff, and that's where the Slade comes in. He had, I remember later on, he had Slade patches. Um, now, a little side note, because I come from a large family, and when I'm family with no money, when Andrew, when Andrew could no longer wear that jacket, who was the idiot who had to wear it? And I wasn't say I didn't have a choice here, guys. It was, you're going to wear this. I had to wear it um, to school because mum wouldn't buy another jacket. And also the jeans. So picture this. It's 1982, maybe 83. Um, everyone's, you know, new waving and punking and, and, and ooh, that's my little gooey, but, uh, and doing stuff. Uh, and I'm there in the playground with peace and love and quo on my jacket. Now, you know, and wearing denim, <laughs> denim flares with patches sewn on because mum couldn't afford to get new ones. So instead of sewing on, she had patches on. Um, thankfully, no pictures survive. Uh, not thankfully, but we had a house fire and all my photographs were destroyed. But thankfully, I never really got any photographs of me in them. Um, at least to say, I got beaten up something rotten. I got bullied and hit so much. I remember coming home, one of the patches ripped off my jacket and on my jeans actually across a rather delicate area let's just say and um and mum like furious you know dad standing stand up for yourself and I was me thinking well don't dress me like 1963 I mean the thing is um I think you know as you said money money dictates and there wasn't any money and that's what we did now you put, send your kids to school and that and they're all retro groovy aren't they it's all like oh man you're so you're so um with it, what are the right terms? I don't know what the term with it is, whatever the term is for the the youths of today. Um, they they would be, you know, they would not be. There'd be some people that turn it right up, but there's some people. All subcultures have, um, um, uh, you know, their ups and downs. But then, my first experience of a jacket that wasn't a hand-me-down um, big symbol that said "Come kick me in the face." Um, it was, um, I had this, I bought this leather jacket from an op shop. So, so um, in America, it would be a, um, uh, in, so in a, it, op shop in Australia, in England, it's a charity shop in America. I think, I'm not sure, Goodwill, I think it is in America. Um, I can't say for the rest of Europe, but that is basically where, you know, donated goods to raise money for charities. I bought this leather jacket and it was, there was a couple of, things that now looking back on it I wish I hadn't done so it was it was really new and that's not a great thing going you don't want to wear a brand new leather bikers jacket you know you just don't right oh retrospectively so I just remembered then Andrew my brother he, after he got rid of the denim he bought a um, he's really into military and he bought a ex uh, army ex air force jacket you know the leather one brown leather with the uh, sheepskin on the inside a bomber's jacket and he had he sewed patches on that, but the patches were military jackets, patches like um, that, that's just what came into my head then. Head then. Anyway, um, so um, I bought this jacket from the op shop, a couple of pounds or whatever it was, and you know I was twelve. Yeah, I was twelve, um, maybe thirteen. In fact, no, I was thirteen, and. I set aside, I set about painting because I couldn't, you couldn't get patches easily. Um, well, I couldn't anyway. There probably was a way of getting them, but I didn't have the money and I didn't have the time. I didn't really have the re way of doing it because most of the good shops that sold that sort of stuff was in Carnaby Street or uh, um, down in, uh, in, in, um, in Highgate, uh, not Highgate, um, Notting Hill Gate, around that area. Um, you know, around there, um, the markets down there, and so I couldn't, I couldn't really um, put the bit of road market. So that's where I met my, that's where I met my wife. I should remember that. Um, if she hears this, she'll probably kill me for not remembering. Um, but yeah, it. So 
I set about painting it, and I was really heavily influenced by the times you know, guys, by um, by Marillion. So I painted the. If anyone knows the the imagery, I painted the jester from um, the front cover of the book by Mark Wilkinson, uh, Marcus Queer Heroes. Um, not Mark, Mark, not Mark Wilkinson. My God. Anyway, I can't remember the author's name now. He's done a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of his author work, but Mark, Mark Wilkinson originally did the picture. That's what I'm trying to think, trying to say. So anyway, from that book, and it's also from the cover of um, uh, original cover of um, Marcus Guerrero as a single, and I painted on that. I did a bloody good job. I thought. I mean, I'm looking back on it. If I could see, it, if I could, fight, if I ever had it, I'd look back and go, "Man, that was shit." But then I was really cool. I was really happy with it. And I did all the logo and everything. And then about a year or so later, when I realised that I was starting getting to the heavier side as well, I, I sort of I um, painted over it with a white, big white, white washed the patch. And then I did a maiden one and did an Eddie on the back. Um, really happy with it. I loved it, loved it. And I still got one a jacket now. I didn't paint it, but I, I inherited it. The Killing Joke one. I, I've talked about it before. Um, anyway, that's my history with jackets. Um, and my patch jacket is not as old as it used to be. I left, I had a patch jacket for years and it sort of got, um, it got left in the UK and, and it, it just disappeared. Uh, now, the one I'm wearing, I wear predominantly, and I'll put the picture up later on in the, in the show's notes, um, is a more modern one. It's something that I started doing again um, with Benji about three or so years ago um, some of the patches are old yeah but the jacket so the jacket's actually a 1970s Levi sleeveless jacket that um, Karen bought for me in Newtown uh, on when we were away in, up in Sydney on, on a, I think we were at Soundwave um, it was a, it's a really lovely jacket and it's perfectly fits perfectly it's I don't have to cut the sleeves off you know it's just great the only thing that, I, that it's got on its pockets um, which I don't, which we'll talk about in the second half about pockets and stuff. Um, anyway, yeah. So that's that's my jacket. That that's the history of jackets. Now there are sort of different types of jackets out there. You know, you've got the black ones for the black metal ones. You've got. I mean, I actually want a grey one. I'd love a black one actually. I don't own one. I don't know if I'd wear one. I'm sort of in the middle of making another one for a horror movie version, like my. My love of horror movies. I'm doing a horror movie one. I uh, originally started out about thema- th- thematically doing them. Like Benji's done a thrash one. He's doing a gaming one. Um, I sort of um, run out of of of, of, uh, of steam on my my horror movie one um, because I finished finally finished everything on my main one, and I was like, well, that's okay. I'll just keep wearing this. And I, I must admit, I've got to sort of get some uh, momentum up and, and start a second jacket um i think but um yeah it it, it uh the the, the different color ones are my f- I, I do go when you go to gigs and you see different color ones you think oh man that looks really cool i really like that one and okay let's let's just move on to why we wear them okay why is it important or is it important to me to wear mine at a gig or benji why or friends anyone really why do we wear them um I'll tell you why, because we are inherently tribalistic as species. We may not be tribes anymore, and let's be honest, subcultural musical tribes no longer really exist. They are there, obviously your hip-hop and your, your country and your metal and your punk, it's still there, but you don't, it doesn't dive, it doesn't dissect the, the, the youth culture so much as it used to. I mean, you know, when I was a teenager, if I went down to certain parts of Hendon where I grew up in certain t-shirts or jackets um, I was likely to come back with a broken nose um, I mean I've told you I've told, told, told you a story where I think I may have done but I'll repeat it I was going to see um, this was it the, oh yeah, it was the Sham 69 at the Fulham the Swan in Fulham which is a pub on the high road Fulham High Road and the train station, it doesn't have escalators, but didn't have when I was there. It's got stairs that go up and down either side, about 150, 200 up, and same back down. 
platforms either side when you get to the bottom of the plat of, of the of the stairs. Now I walked towards this one. I was dressed fully dressed in my punk gear, so I had like a Mohican, I had my killing joke jacket on, I had my bondage pants on. I think I'm, at the time I was wearing my um, my um, my Vivian Westwood um, Snow White and the Red Dwarves being gang banged t-shirt which I still love and I have been I don't cherish it um, you can see the image of that it's actually a famous t-shirt I got it a copy of it it's not an original sadly um, it's, a, it's a copy that was bought um, not soon after the shop opened but it's not an original by her um, I have an original Westwood but not that one so anyway um, I was yeah I was walking towards this one and then I got to this one and, the, and they and I and the sign that said Sham 69 it said um, cancelled and a bit of me sort of was a bit shitty and annoyed I sort of kicked the sign um, and I mean it, it, this is 1993 guys I mean it's not like it's 77 I turned around um, uh, as I, I took back and the Sham has this sort of skinhead following right Anyone knows the band? I, I really fucking love the Sham 69. I really, really do. Um, Hurry Up Harry is one of my favourite songs. Um, and they don't want us in the USA, which is brilliant as well. And of course, all of that, Ball Still Breakout, everything. Anyway, um, this. I forgot. Do you know what I see him? I can see him as clearly as yesterday. He was a skinhead, and he was such a typical skinhead. You know, you had the, you had the cut, the jeans rolled up past the ankles, the bobber boots, the. Um, the the belt braces hanging down by his sides, a white Fred Perry t-shirt on, tattooed everywhere, and he's and he had glasses. I mean, he had glasses, and I don't know where he got it from because I didn't see it originally. But he started shouting at me in German, and I think, I think he thought I was being disrespectful to the band. He pulled out this bloody um, bike chain. Now I was. But about a hundred meters from the train station. I don't know if you know the Fulham High Road. It's quite a distance, right, to the train station. But I'd no, no. In memory, it's probably a bit further. But anyway, I'm I'm fast. I've always been fast. So my instinct said run because he pulled the chain out. So I, I basically just pelted down the high road, down the through the barriers, down the stairs while he's chasing me. Um, and for God, I'm so lucky. The train was on the platform. I didn't give a fuck where it was going. I jumped on and the door shut. And as the door shut, he's like smashing the side of the chain with a with the bike chain, like the, sorry, the train with the bike chain. Oh my god, man! I wasn't so I haven't been so clenched in my life. I don't think you know. So see, I don't think that kind of subculture stuff really exists anymore. But that's why we wear these jackets, right? Sorry, move my computer. It's so that it's so that we can, you know, proudly. It's like, well, why do I wear a band shirt every day? Every single day of the year, unless I'm going out for dinner or somewhere nice with my wife, I will wear a band shirt. Why? Because I want, I want people. I I like people to know this is me. This is my culture. That's why I get really angry when I see teenagers, you know, or shops like Cotton On in America. So I don't know where or UK, but over here we have a shop called Cotton On, which is like a teeny, poppery, you know, sort of like trendy um high street fashion brand and they often will have like they've got six pistols t-shirts in there they've obviously bought the rights to do it maiden and motorhead and i get really angry um yeah you know, i don't i don't go up to them and start saying you know don't steal their culture please don't steal my culture that's how i feel i mean i know it sounds a bit like um, i'm being a bit old manly about it but i do and i think that's why we wear it. I, I put my jacket on when I go to gigs because I, I want to stand out. I am a peacock. I do have a show-off gene in me. I wouldn't do this if, if that was the case, you know. Um, and I also like, sort of like, to, a bit a bit like stamp collecting or, or um, coin collecting or whatever you're doing. There she goes. Um, it's like it's like you can nerd fest out of it. People come up and go, oh, that patch, that band. I mean, the amount of times I've worn a jacket, or Benji and I have worn jackets at gigs and... We were the only ones wearing them. I mean, it's more and more so now. But um, and people come up, and we, they just just start chatting. It's a brilliant way, a to meet people out there at gigs. If you're feeling a bit, um, you know, don't know what to do at a gig, wear a, a shirt that people never heard of. 
so people can ask you questions or wear a jacket like that if you don't want attention um you don't have to get attention you still wear your jacket but i still think you should i think it's a great way i love it and 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 it sort of shows on your shows you who sort of points out what kind of fan you are um and i'm going to get to that bit in the second half on on my do's and not do's and does oh, is do's and does the right thing um what I would, would, wouldn't do, I think, is the right thing to say. I don't think do's and don'ts is the right. Because really, you know, it's up to you um, what you do and, and, and how you do it. Individuality is important. I think there are just some vital mistakes that people do make when it comes to their jackets. And, and I've been one of those people. Um, and you see them all the time at gigs. Uh, it's... a yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to that on the, in the second part. Um, I really, really, I'd love to see you guys. If you've got any jackets and you're wearing them, I'd, I'd love you to come onto my, come onto the. I know Facebook's for old farts, as my, as my youngest daughter told me the other day, or my oldest daughter told me the other day, which is interesting. I'm an old fart now, apparently. Um, I know it's for old farts, and I say I don't do TikTok. I'm not doing that crap. Um, I could barely do Instagram. Um, just just if you can come onto my on page onto the page um, and just share some photographs. I'd love to see the ones from around the world. I've got listeners listeners from all around the world, guys, um, and that would be real fun to see what people's jackets are like and see if we can share some stories um, and some and some um, you know rare patches or you know have you made your own patches? Some people make their own patches. I mean, it's just really interesting, um, you know. Anyway. Um, that's me for now for side one I'm going to go and refresh my tea um, because my throat's a bit dry oh man yeah I've been on my own for the last three nights my wife's been away um, house sitting or cat sitting my daughter's cats while she's away at the coast and uh, all I've done is is play loud music and, and, and watch um horror movies it's been fun i have to say but i'm a bit tired because i'd like i was like oh turn off no i watch the football i'll go to bed no i don't have to no i don't get up for work in the morning um so yeah if I, i'm a bit groggy <laughs> not headachey groggy like last week oh man i don't know i did last week i had such a blinding migraine trying to concentrate and record because i've only got i've only really got this sort of window i could do it tuesday nights but it's not the same i like to record on the monday and it gives me tuesday evening to if i don't like what I've done to play around with it. Not that I'm editing it, but I can re-record it and so on. Play around with the background music and and here and there. So it's a small window because I only get Mondays off during the week. Um, and Sundays I'm too busy. So that's me for this side. I will talk to you soon, guys. Again, as always, enjoy the commercialism and adverts that we flung at you. Um, I'm sure there'll be mattresses and... Uh, and at my age group, they're listening to this show. There's probably uh, prostate check adverts and um, and and, and future, future assurers, like like insurance and stuff. Really exciting, amazing ads like that. Um, anyway, <laughs> either way, you're probably going to skip them. I do when I listen to shows. Uh, I skip them. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of doing page and a Patreon page so that you don't have to have any of that stuff. But I don't know what kind of thing. Um, you want to hear if you do want to hear a patreon page and are willing to pay a little bit of it and it would be only one cost it were one level it would be five dollars it would not be um, several levels I don't have the energy or time um, if you want it will be an extra show I don't know what it'd be ad free I'm sure um, I wish I could play music on it I can't it's stereo it's it's not stereotype god in my head it's um it's got you know it's um it's covered by laws that I can't copyright or stereotype. Copyright stereotype b -b 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 -b, sounds the same, doesn't it? Bounces the same way. Um, yeah. So, um, although wouldn't it be dot bad if you got arrested because you of stereotype breaking stereotype rules? <laughs> if that was the case, I'd be in prison for years. Um, right. So, talk to you on the other side, guys. I've rambled enough. Um, tea's getting cold. Bye now.
Hey ho guys, welcome back to side two and to this interesting chat about jackets and fashion. Um, so as I rambled on in the first half, it's sort of basic history about my history of jackets and things on and so forth. Um, this one's a bit more like what I would recommend if you're first to buy, if you're going, you're listening to this show and you go, oh, I really want to make a jacket. What's Tone's thoughts on this? Um, I, I've got to really be careful that I don't sound... Um, snobby i really want not to be um i do get snobby i do it's human nature um it's like the car it's like you're a fast car at the um, traffic lights you know uh looking across and seeing the shitty old little volkswagen and you're in a porsche or something you do i'm sure you go (laughs) you know uh, although i'm sure that little volkswagen means a lot to someone and that's the point right so where, where do i start so let's start firstly with the basics the jacket itself um you can get them um i know benji gets his off of like off the internet um he's a larger dude and i'm sure he won't mind me saying that he's a he's a big unit of a man um and so he needs a large jacket and so um you know they're not always easy to get particularly the sleeveless blue let blue denim i think that benji if i remember right he cuts his sleeves off Anyway, so you can get them online, um, sleeveless denim jackets. Uh, you can get them in all sorts of shades of color. Blue, gray, black, white. As I said in the beginning, if you're going to start, start with the blue, I think, because it's the most traditional. If you want a more traditional jacket, stick with your blue one. If you can buy a sleeveless one, brilliant, because if you can cut, cut the sleeves off. Um, I've never seen anyone with a... Um, a sleeve uh, patch jacket you can buy i mean i've we've got an acquaintance and a friend of mine bulldog his name is i haven't seen him for a little while actually i hope he's all right he's a big maiden fan and he wears a full length i mean a denim jacket if you've ever seen the jacket that the the patch jacket that uh rob halford wears it's the same one it's full length it's like a like almost like a back like a, a war jacket like it's not even a jacket it's like a, it's an overcoat and it, every single inch of that jacket is covered with maiden patches he would buy full maiden he would buy full jackets of a people just for one patch on it they take off that jacket he's a he's a crazy dude and i love it and it's a spectacular jacket um that aside so yeah get these so if you can get a pre pre-sleeved one that's brilliant try and get them without pockets on the front and I'll, i'm going to say why like i might have got two chest pockets which are brilliant for putting my ear plugs in at gigs and you know, I'm always, I collect um, uh, a set list, so I'm always one region over the barrier and grabbing a set list and it goes in the pocket. But the, they're just a pain, if you, you actually lose a bit of real estate. Like, I'm not a very big dude, so um, I'm quite slender, uh, although I'm sure my wife will tell you differently. Um, I'm quite slender, and um, compared to, say, Benji, for instance, so I don't have the real estate, and so I need to fill space up so i like to have no pocket no hanging pocket because then i could put something above that see mine's a typical 70s jacket so it's got like it's re it's triple so it's a it's a proper levi jacket so it's got double stitching so you can't just rip the pockets off the cheaper jackets you can because they're single stitched them um and that's probably a way of doing it. if you want a really tough one go for a vintage old jacket online if you can get them cheaply if not, the more modern ones are, but they're not as well made, so you can sort of um, rip the the pockets off. Then you've got to look at: um, Are you going to thematic? Are you going to theme the jacket? All right. Um, I originally started out to just do a Nawabum one, um, just to sort of be back into my heyday and feel like a, a, u- a Ute again. Um, I'm up with the downies, um, but no, I, I, I started that way, and then, like all great creative things, I'd find stuff and I'd want to put it on. I couldn't be bothered to get another jacket and do another jacket, and so it ended up being bits and pieces. Um, I've got horror movie ones on there. I've got handmade patches on there. I've got punk stuff. I've got. I've even got one for my beloved football team, West Ham United on there um and yeah i know it's not metally but 
Steve Harris and I made the metal uh, are West Ham fans. Are you telling me they're not metal? Then they, I think you'd know what you're talking about. Anyway, so that's my case. And people say, oh, you're doing that because they're from West Ham. No, that's actually my team. Um, I've been a West Ham supporter since I was four. And so, um, I, you know, all those people, all those faux as football supporters out there, you know, plastic, fantastic, Man City fans or whatever. I probably divide. I probably divided my fan base now. Doesn't matter. Uh, the, if you love them, you love them. I don't. It's not getting to that argument. One second. Hmm. Okay. So then, once you've once you've decided what you're going to do, then you need to. And please, people, this is really, really important. If you're going to take any heed from me, and and Benji, I'm sure will say in his top five the same thing as me. Don't debut your jacket until it's at least 50 or 60% done. I I can't tell you how much I really dislike and, and, I, and I, this is and this is my snobbery coming out. Is you know you go to a gig and yours is full resplendent and you look over and there's some geezer with um, an ACDC patch about the size of a credit card on, his, on you know in the corner. And another one at the bottom, because it's, I know that you, I know you want to buy them, and, and you can't always get them at the same time. You want to get them and wear them, but it just doesn't look good. It it it, it really does put you in. And I again, I'm gonna I'm gonna um I'm gonna divide my audience here, but it puts you in the in the middle age, and I'm middle aged. I'm not gonna deny that. Um, puts you in the grey middle aged. Um, uh, trying to capture a youth again bracket. The ones that start off headbanging at the front last about 30 seconds and then head off to the bar um, and stand there quietly at the back because um, they were never quite brave enough in their youth and they're never not brave enough now. Um, and there's my, there you go, see there's my, there's my snobbery. Sorry guys, but it's how I feel. I just, I just get really, I just, come on, make a bit of effort. Now, again, that I shouldn't, but you like, because you know they're doing their doing their thing. Anyway, um, and you know what? Fill spaces up. Fill spaces up with badges. I've got a lot of 1970s Sex Pistols badges on, which I really shouldn't wear on because someone grabs them. They're gonna and I, they come off. I'm gonna be really quite shitty. Um, they have got studs on there. Um, Benji has chains, bullets sewn on. You know, it's it's a real um, creativity, creative streak for. And and a way of uh, of showing your, your your not loyalty to the medium, but certainly your um, you know loyalty. I think is the right word. Anyway, so that's my one of my tips. So please don't please don't debut it until most of it's covered. At least until you've got your back patch, and that's a separate thing. We'll move on to back patches in a minute. So then, once you've got your jacket and you in, in, and you've got say like ten or fifteen patches, um, sew them on. Don't iron them on, because I've got a couple I've ironed on because I just couldn't get through the patches. I've overlapped patches and they're just too thick, so I've I've um, ironed them on. And in doing so, I melted one of my favourite patches, which is my um, Sabbat patch for Dreamweaver. Really, it looks good because it's slightly melted, has a real kind of rock and roll feel. But at the time, I was extra pissed. Um, but yeah, so you know, sew them on, don't iron them on. Now. Tip for sewing, uh, and this is from someone who did. And I'm gonna, you know, you might look roll your eyes here and giggle, but I've got a textiles qualification. When I was at art college, yes, I went to art college. As Benji always makes me laugh, reminds me of the of the quote from Red Dwarf: "You went to art college. Um, how'd you get in? You know, just went through the door." Um, I <laughs> I'm misquoting that badly, um, but anyway, I'm sure Benji will know what I'm talking about. Uh, so. Sewing them on now, you could uh, depending on the color. Most patches have a colored rim on them, right? And so, if you're not going to use the matching corresponding cotton for the patch, and you're just going to use black like me because I'm a lazy bastard, um, you don't want to sew over the color. Like, so a running chain stitch, right? So, whichever stitch you want to do, if you're doing it over the top, you'll see it. You might not see it at the gig on low light, but you're going to see it. Someone's going to see it. So, so in front of the coloured piece, in uh, front of the coloured piping on the edge, inside, and, and, and whichever technique of stitch you want to do, make sure that you 
do it that way because even if it, even if you can flick the edge, it won't come off. All right, but if you've got a black patch all the way to the edge, sew it and loop it over the edge. All right, um, I generally go one, two, three stitches and then I tie it. One, two, three stitch, tie it. Um, it's been a long time since I was, did my degree, so actually describing this to you is a bit embarrassing because I can't remember, but that's basic. I just know it anyway. So sewing's better because if you want to move them, you can. And I know that Benji uh, and myself have moved patches all over the place because you put them on, you like, you think, brilliant, okay, um, they look good. And then you eventually realize, oh shit, I want to get this patch on this different shape. I need to move the patch around and you move it around. Um, you do need, so you need some needles. And I say decent sized needles. If you're my age, one with a big eye so you can get the, the thread through. Um, you need also a quite sized chunky needle is good because it gets through the patch and through the denim. I always I have a pack of uh, 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 it's my wife's actually sewing box, but I use her um, her pins to pin seamstress pins to pin the net so it keeps it in place when I'm sewing it because you don't want, if you try and do it that it can shift and change shape and stuff and move all over the place. It causes pucker as well. Um, I use the back of a chair, so I drape the, my jacket over the back of a chair and sew it like facing me, so it's just a little bit easier. Um, plan it out first, pin them all down first, what you've got, and then sew. You can, you know, you can always change your mind. That's that's a, a good way, a, a good tip there for you. I wasn't going to do tips, but you know, that's what I that's what I do. That's what Benji does, I'm sure. I think you know he does. Um, plan out where you're going to put. There's always going to be spaces where you can't get a patch, but you don't want lots of bare spots. A good battle jacket is really full, really like a good Christmas tree, right? It's it's, it's weighed down with decorations. Yeah, you want it nice and full. So fill it with badges. You know, gigs these days, you can buy badges, you can buy patches, um, you can buy patches. I mean, one of the joys, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I haven't done it for ages because I, I haven't bought patches for some time, but Benji will tell you. One of the joys of buying um, is, is hunting for patches that are unusual and different. You may not have even liked to listen to the band. Sometimes, I mean, I've got a, a patch on there from a band called October 13. Um, they're a really good band when I listen to them now but when I first got the patch I had no idea I just really enjoyed the the, the imagery on it um, now I don't agree with that with t-shirts because you should really know the band if you're going to wear the shirt but this patch was just there and I thought look, fuck, it looks great why not let's get that um, I mean I've seen some again I keep going on Benji but Benji did a really good um, his thrash jacket is, is a, a thing to behold it's a thing of beauty I mean he's really come it's just Jam packed with so much thrashy goodness, um, and it looks like he's made it. I think that's another thing, guys. You want the jacket to look like you've made it. There are jackets out there, and I've seen them, they are fantastic, they are absolutely fantastic. But they look like they've been bought, they look like they've been made for them. And I don't know, I don't know. I mean, if you don't have the time, uh, but you've got the passion and the money, and you can pay someone to do it, great. Um, but they'll, if someone makes it, they'll make it with a bit of love. It, the, some of these jackets look like they've been bought pre-sewn uh, off eBay or, or, or Amazon or, I don't know, God forbid, maybe even AliExpress, something like that. Who knows, right? Um, sorry, I'm peeking. Oh, my God. This, one second. Um, I get excited. I'm too close to the mic. This new mic is a bit, a bit touchy-feely. So if it pops, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so you've got, your, you've got your jacket. You're sewing it on. It doesn't matter if it's rough and ready. It doesn't matter if the, you can see some of the stitches or you can see some of the cotton. Um, that's part of the fun. Fill the spots with studs. I bought, um, Benji bought the studs for us off of, I think it may be in AliExpress. I can't remember. Oh, no, it was Switch or Stitch or whatever. I don't know, some one of those cheap online auction places and um and you know studs and stuff and i put all that on look you know it's i know it's very new wave but that's what i'm looking for choose it your style if you're going a death metal one a lot of people like to wear i'm i really want a, a black death metal one i do i'm I do, just plain black and white um patches i think that's my will be my next one as the horrible one is finished a black uh, black and white 
the death metal one i think will be an absolute cracker of a jacket once they can get that going um you know with some really obscure norwegian um bands that people will look at stop and look at the jacket and go what the hell is that um he said, I, I quite like the stop. The, the people stop me at the bar and, and point at the jackets and ask me to turn around and have a look at it. I must admit, I, the peacock in me quite enjoys it, actually. And sometimes I want them just to fuck off, but most of the time, uh, you know. I've told you the stories in the last episodes where I had that, if you ever saw the guy come up to me because I was wearing my jacket with the smoking area. I don't smoke, but we're out in the smoking area, which is um, can you fresh air out in the gig at the basement, and he comes telling me the story that he bought a... Um, an x-ray machine from an old hospital and then wheeled it off a cliff <laughs> oh, all because all because the lead lives milk tray no all because um, <laughs> I was wearing my jacket and he, I think he just got gravitated towards me to be honest um, it also shows your age these jackets they can show your age because the bands you put on there of course I don't have anything I certainly don't have any hair metal bands I, I, I would not be seen dead honestly I even felt a little bit funny about putting an Iron Maiden patch on and I fucking love Iron Maiden you know that um, I was sort of didn't want to be mainstream and, that, and and there's another thing you know people buy these patch packets of patches um, to start their jackets off and they're usually you know the cheaply made there's no artwork it's just a logo it's things like you know i mean i saw i saw a cracking jacket the other day and it was like he had uriah heap he had um bad finger he had um sabbath he had priest and all this sort of stuff on it um not that they're obscure but they're just a bit different from the usual you know the motley crews and the acdcs and the Oh my God! Even like um the, the the I mean I've seen I've seen um, Rolling Stone stuff on there. Uh, I I was gonna put a Marillion one on, but and I've got one, but I never put it on. You know, I, I, again, I felt a little bit like I wanted to be um, a little bit different, a little bit more obscure, a little bit elitist. I think there's a little bit of me that was a bit like that, which is again, is that a good thing? I don't know. I liked it. I like the idea of wearing something that someone else has got. I like having T-shirts that people don't have. Uh, you know, why not? I've got records that people don't have. It's it's just sort of nice to know I'm the one that has it. I'm the keeper of the flame, it feels like sometimes. Um, that aside, so... Where was I? Yeah, so get your, get your, um, get your studs on, get your badges on, organise it, sew it on. Okay? There are all but a plethora... Would you say I have a plethora of badges? There is a plethora. It's a quote from you. Anyone can know where that's from? Anyone knows where that's from? I'd be surprised. I'm sure there are people out there know. Did you say I have a plethora of pinatas? Um, do you want to wonder if, come on guys, I wonder if you, you can get it. It's one of my favourite movies. Um, it, as another dividing movie, I bloody love this movie, that quote. Anyway, I'll leave it for you to know, to work out. Um, so yes so there are a plethora of, uh, of shapes sizes and colours pricing wise be careful I live on the uh, I live in Australia so technically the arse end of the world I love this country I really really do but it's so far away from everything it's unbelievable so where I get my patches and Ben generous if I get our patches we either get them online or we get them at gigs now getting them online be careful because um, you don't know what you're getting you sort of get you guess it um, the problem with it is and I and I both Benji and I both have this this grievance is it's a patch it weighs bugger all it has no size put an envelope put a stamp on it why are you charging me six dollars for a patch and thirty dollars for postage it is absolutely sinful um, what people will do and people pay it as well it's really sinful I know when you're living in the US or in Europe that's not going to be the case but if you're far away or you are in Europe and you want something from Australia for instance you might want a Neo Bliviscaris patch you might want a um, I don't know a, a witch skull patch or something whatever and you're overseas it's, you know I just don't agree with, with charging postage just be careful don't get ripped off um, try buy in, in bulk because you're going to get from certain bands you're going to get a better deal um, 
I like the woven ones over the printed ones. I do have printed ones, but the trouble with the printed ones is that they tear. Like I had some dickhead uh, at a gig a few weeks ago grab the back of my jacket and hang off my jacket. Almost, almost pulled my back jacket, my back patch off. And honestly, I, I turned around, I, I almost did physical harm. I um, was really, really angry. I don't mind you jumping around and getting having fun, and, but please don't hang off me like a bloody um, on a Christmas tree. Don't hang off me like that. You know, I've worked hard on this just because you don't or haven't. Um, you know what I mean? That aside, so I like the woven ones. Don't really like the the printed ones. Oh, I've got a few of them. I be careful when it comes to the really cheap printed ones like the death metal ones because they fray very easily because they're on fabric that's not been the edges haven't been um piped so you've got to sew those really well and i mean you've got to probably double sew those you want to sew a line on the inside to the jacket and then an outside one to stop it fraying off um that's where i would go now once you've chose your range of patches and what you're going to have on there and what, what represents your love and your your there you go then wrong word your passion and your personality um, then is the time to choose the back patch the back patch is a really difficult one really really difficult because it's the one that says hey this is the band I really love hey this is my thing again pet peeve with back jack, uh, back patches, um, middle of the road, right, middle of the road, mainstream back patches. Now, you may only listen to Motley Crue, and that might be your thing. Then put a Motley Crue back patch on. Fine, it won't stop me rolling my eyes. I'm gonna roll my eyes. I think a back patch because it takes so much, so much real estate. Whether it's circular, whether it's square, whatever, whatever it's shaped, it takes a lot of real estate up on your jacket. And it's basically like wearing a tour t-shirt. So you have to put on something that really means something to you. Now, should you double up on the same band on a jacket? I have done. I've got a, front, I've got a small patch and a back patch of the same band because I love this band very, very much. Um, I've got Venom on my jacket on the back. I've got the, um, the Goat of Mendez. It's a brightly colored one. I got an absolute bargain. I picked it up on eBay, $12.00. US, so it was about $15 Australian at the time, free postage. I thought it was going to be shit. I thought, well, I'll pay that and see what comes out. It is, I love it. It's so colourful and thick and so well made. I couldn't believe for the dollars I paid for what I got for it. Um, what uh, Benji does, he, he wears a, he's got t shirts that he's cut up and he's, that don't fit him or they were too small when he got them and he's sewn those on. That's a real old school punk way of doing it. And I, used to, I did have one of those with a, a pistol sewn on the back of a jacket years ago. It is a great way of doing it. Um, it will get ruined if you mosh a lot, but we don't do that too much. So, you know, um, if someone grabs you, and I said, Benji's a big unit, you can grab a new Benji, you're in a lot of trouble. Um, and so it'll just push you aside, like puny human. Um, and so... Yeah, so get your jacket. So it's that again. Make sure because I don't like to put the the back the back patch right to the top of the under the collar of the jacket. I like um, a banner sort of top of there. Like, and you can buy some long narrow patches. I got a I bought a Satyricon shirt that came in the mail from one of those Georgie auction sites, and um, and it was like swimming. I'm not lying you to you, it was swim material. It was like swimsuit material. What the hell? It was like I was going to wear it if I had a, t you know, like if I was really super tight wearing it, like at a at a, at a, at a gay club or something. And, and that's not just having. I'm not being homophobic. It's just a, an observation. Um, skin tight stuff, right? So um, I cut the satirical logo off off the shirt. I got me. I got my money back, by the way. Um, and I sewed it onto the top of the jacket. It was a bugger to sew because it was that stretchy material. So it was really um, an absolute arse to get on. It looks a bit rough and ready, but as I said, I don't want a jacket that looks like I've had it made. We know people who have jackets that look like they've been made. And honestly, there's no... You haven't picked those patches out. You don't love that band. You've not made an effort to, to, to 
contact the band's page to get this, got it at the gig, talk to the gig, you know. Um, what I'll say as well, a little from a little note now, um, if you go to a gig these days, patches are becoming more and more popular. Um, buy the patch first, put it in your pocket. Benji and I were at the Stalker gig recently and we went to get some cash because they had no FPOS machine or no contactless payment for overseas listeners. Um, and um, so we, by the time we got back, I said to Benji, no, 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 who's buying the patches? There are loads of them. They're all gone. Ah, and there were none on the website either. So, you know, um, make sure that you do um, go and grab that first up, I think. Same with, you know, bun, uh, badges or pin badges or buttons, as they call them in America. I've never understood why they're called buttons. I know they look like buttons, but, yeah. And you know, put my tea down, crash, bang, wallop, what a picture. Um, yeah, so you can see how it's coming together. I, I have been slightly disparaging about the old guys in the half finished jacket standing at the front, the, the weekend warriors, um, as, as they're often called, um, as Bruce Dickinson once put it quite aptly. I have nothing against weekend warriors. I have nothing against them. You're not you're not always gonna write write um, for magazines and like me and do podcasts and interview people. You're not gonna live music as much as that maybe myself and other people do, and that's fine. But if you find an outlet for it, fine as well. So please don't. Um, if you listen to this and go, oh my god, I feel like an idiot. No, you're not. It, it, I did I did start out wanting not to be snobby for this podcast and I found myself really reining in because I want to say some things there are people I know and I, I, I just I want to go oh my god so, you know grind your teeth at it um, but then you know increasingly at gigs there are a lot of younger people I mean when I say younger god anyone's comparative but I'm saying in their 20s wearing them and they do bloody good jobs man some of the stuff is really good looking stuff and some of the patches are fantastic and I get patch envy um, and I go up and I go, oh, I've, often I'd say to them, oh, I've got patch envy, I really want that patch. Or where do you get it from? And a lot of them are quite hard to get hold of, you know. Um, I thought about doing a Venom, full Venom jacket, patch jacket. Um, there's some amazing Venom patches out there, but they go for such silly dollars now, the originals. Um, I suppose I could go and get copies of them, maybe. It's the back, it's the back patch that's... It's all I find the hardest of the lot. Like my horror movie one, I've got a great big. Um, I got it from Goblin House. They're a really good place to buy horror movie patches, by the way. I got a Nosferatu one. I got a Salem's Lot one. I got a Thing one. Actually, I was wearing my jacket the other day, and uh, this drunk guy comes up, and I'm wearing the Thing the, the jacket from the movie The Thing, which is my horror favorite, one of my favorite horror movies. And he just pointedly went, and there's a quote in it, you know, where um, Kurt Russell. He goes, you've got to be fucking kidding me. And he just pointed at my jacket and he goes, you've got to be fucking kidding me. And I was two sheet, three sheets to the window, didn't know what he was talking about, to look down and he was pointing at my thing jacket. And I was like, oh, right, gotcha. I thought he was trying to piss out of me or something. I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? Um, anyway, um, the back, the back, back yes, my horror, my horror movie one is one for... It's quite actually, it, when I think about it now, it might offend, but who cares, I suppose. It's a cannibal holocaust um, make them die slowly. It's the one with the the band poster with the um, the, the woman that's been speared through the anus out and through the mouth, up through the anus and out through the mouth, um, and she's sort of, you know, and then all the cannibals are eating you know, innards around her. It's you know, again, that's a horror movie that you know again divides. Um, I love Italian. Um, I've already mentioned this before. I love Italian shock cinema. Uh, I love Italian. Um, um, genre um, cinema and with the 70s and 80s and that's one of the defining movies Cannibal Holocaust um, I was going to get Cannibal for Ox one but that's a little bit too out there anyway that aside I'm glad I, I hope we've got something covered here I hope you have getting some insights like I said if Benji gets back to me soon he's a very busy man I'll do a little five minute follow up of what he's doing so notes are probably very similar to mine I'd say um, but really the out, the outcome is do what you want don't hold back and don't think 
there are there will be people at gigs who, who look at you and do think oh my god that's a ten dollar kmart patch there are going to be those people and i can be those people and when benji and i get together we are those people um not all the time most of the time we're admiration sometimes not it also depends how much of the um you know the brain diffusing amber fluid we have consumed um during the gig or before the gig um if we're a bit more loose-lipped we might think it most of the time we give it to ourselves um, I'm sure people look at mine and go, oh my God, look how poorly that's sewn on. Or, Jesus, I don't know if I like, why has he got a King Diamond patch on next to a, uh, a God Save the Queen Sex Pistols patch? The reason I've got the Sex Pistols patch on there is my oldest daughter went back to the UK about four years ago and brought me back a, a patch with God Save the Queen on it. And since our dear departed Queen has gone, departed King, our queen, dear Queen has departed and gone, you can't, you know, uh, um, I feel more proud of wearing it, to be honest with you. I really do. Um, I've got, I mean, I will put a picture of my jacket up as well on the Facebook Facebook page, but um, there's another thing. A lot of bands, uh, I buy a lot of uh, records that come with packs, and um, I find, uh, you know what? It's not October 13, the band's Wednesday 13. Oh my God, October 13 is when I'm going to the movies. <laughs> Oh dear! It was a thirteen, and it was in my brain. Oh my god! The band's Wednesday Thirteen. That's the patch, guys. If you need to know about them, um, where October Thirteen? Oh my god! Anyway, I suppose there is a band. Well, there might be a band called October Thirteen, but uh, anyway, I'm going to see um, All Quiet on the Western Front. Actually, with Benji, it's the new Netflix version. I think that's going to be interesting. Um, side note. Side note. Um, but yes, um, oh, I scratched myself there. Oh, sorry, get comfortable. Um, some more tea. Yeah. So, well, where are I? I'm just getting, I'm getting discombobulated. Then all of a sudden, I just remembered that, and it came to my head. Just do what you do. Feel free, wear what you want. You know. Oh, yes, yeah, I was saying. So, all records come with patches, and I always think, should I put them on my jacket because um, I'm worried that that patch is going to be because I'm such a collector that it's going to I'm going to ruin the value of the package I bought and I'm thinking to myself no because I was one pick it and put it back in the pack and honestly it looks like it's been, it's been worn and that's part of the use it's there for isn't it? it's like records you don't buy records just to look at them although I've got some to look at you you, you put them on to play right so that, that's that really um, and Oh, 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 so top tip, top tip, one of my top tips. If you're at a gig uh, and you know the band's not going to come out again or it's like a farewell tour or something and they've got patches that are dated or they've got patches there, buy a couple, put one away. Um, a, for sentimental values, but B, you know, in the future, you can always wang them to someone and get some dosh for it. There's some street terms for you, wang and dosh. There we go. I am relevant. Um you can sell it to someone for some money for English speaking people um, anyway that's me, I could ramble on um, enjoy your jackets make them, show me them I'd love to see them um, if you are getting made for them if you can't be making them yourself and you are getting them made for you, fine just ask the people that are making, for, making them for you to sort of be part of the process so you know where the patches are going so you can say yes or no um, you don't really want to Get your set, you know, pay three or four hundred dollars. I don't know what it would be, a couple of hundred pounds, whatever it is, and it's sent to you. And it's like just you just all the things are in the wrong place. I'm sure there are companies out there, people out there that will have that interaction with you. Um, if they don't, then I'd probably get someone else to do it for you. I think uh, you can use their knowledge and experience, great, but at the same time, I think you, it's a very personal thing and it shows when you wear the jacket that what you're wearing is personal is a resemblance and reflection of you um, and your your um, musical journey through life and I think if you leave it in the hands of someone to put things in wrong places because there are parts of, there are, I mean didn't talk about it really but certain parts of jackets are certain high level real estate you don't put a band you really love down the side under your armpit because you can't see it 
you want to show that off it's probably one of those ones you're not quite sure about you know I've got a couple under there that I'm like oh yeah I'll just put that it's a nice patch but my behemoth patch for instance I love behemoth but that particular patch isn't very good so I just sits underneath there I mean I must admit I had to take my ghost patch off I had a ghost patch on really proudly rocked it loved it had to take it off um, because it just went to shit same with my witch find I had a really great witch find patch uh, and um, I was trying to remove them and I've got these little secateurs to remove cotton from when you're sewing and I cut straight through it oh so pissed I had to sew the patch it looks rock and roll I suppose but yeah it annoyed me slightly so just be so you know accidents will happen you're going to prick yourself you're going to get you know calluses um, buy a thimble if you really need one um, what does a drummer with a list play thimbles <laughs> oops anyway that's the end of it me and the dad joke finish that show finish the show this week um, hope you enjoyed it love to see your jackets um, talk to you next week um, keep safe keep rocking bye for now <laughs>